percent error is a way of determining how close you are to the true value. The formula that you'll need to write down is percent error is equal to the absolute value of experimental value minus actual value over the actual value. So these lines here represent absolute value, which means if you get a negative percent error, you're just going to make it positive. Because it is a percent, make sure you multiply by 100 at the end. So here we have a sample question. A student weighs a beaker and records its mass as that. The actual mass of the beaker, though, was this number. So what is the student's percent error? So the experimental value is what the student actually got in lab, which is this one. Minus what they should have gotten, or the true value, over the true value. Again, it's going to be absolute value and times 100. Make sure that you put enter between the subtraction and division. So when we type it in the calculator, it's going to be our 47.21 minus, so 47.21 minus 47.93. Enter divided by 47.93 enter times 100. So I get negative 1.50. But because it's absolute zero, our absolute value, I'm going to make this 1.50. Since it's a percent, go ahead and put your answer in two numbers after the decimal. So this is just 1.50%. All right, let's see how we would see it in a lab. You have a density problem, so go ahead and pause the video and figure out the density of this object based on the information above. You're looking for the density. They gave you the mass. For the volume of the object, you should have done 33.8 milliliters and subtracted it or subtracted 10.7 from that. So the volume of the object is 23.1. So now my mass goes on top, my volume goes on bottom. Dividing that, you should have gotten 19.91, but we want three sig figs, so it's going to be 19.9. Don't forget your units. So the density we just calculated was 19.9. So then part B says that they find out that the object was actually pure gold and thus has a density of 19.3. So what is the student's percent error on this object? Go ahead and pause the video and find your percent error. Restart when you have your answer. So the experimental value should have been 19.9. The actual was 19.3, that's what's found in your reference tables. Actual goes on bottom, I'm absolute valuing it, and I'm going to multiply by 100. So if you said 3.11%, you are correct. Remember that we want two numbers after the decimal, and make sure that you're rounding, because in the calculator, you get this, but that 8 should have rounded that 0 up. And finally, part C. We have another object that looks very similar to that first object. So based on this information above, figure out is the second object also pure gold and justify that answer with a calculation. I'm going to pause the video until you have your answer written down. Since the objects look similar to each other, the best way to figure out if they are the same is to look at their density. So your calculation should have been the calculation of density. You would have solved it just like we did for A. We know our mass and our volume should have been 21.7 minus 12.3.
So we get a volume of 9.4 milliliters. Dividing these gives me a density of 3.6 grams per milliliter. And it's two sig figs because this had now two sig figs. So if this object has a density of 3.6 and gold has a density of 19.3, do you think those are the same object? I said no, this object's density is not even close to gold, so it must not be pure gold. It may have a little bit of gold in it, or it may not have any gold in it, but it's definitely not pure gold, because those densities are too far away for it to be even experimental error. Earlier, we'd calculated 19.9, and the actual was 19.3. Those are at least in the same ballpark, so that makes sense that we just had a little bit of error in our measurements. But if we calculated the percent error of this one, it would be too far off to justify it being gold.